Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte, I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering IIT Bombay. So, we are going to talk about what are called Jackson open queuing networks today which are basically queuing networks with branching and feedback. Last time we had studied only tandem queuing networks, uh, today we are going to study these kind of generalized queuing networks. So, what do we have in these general queuing networks? Uh, we have multiple queuing stations as you can see this is S1, S2, S3 these are multiple queuing station and request can go from one station uh, which we sometimes also call node, node and station I will use interchangeably to another with some probability. So, uh, for example, here uh, in fact there are three branches going on once a request finishes its service at station S1 there are three possibilities it can finish let us say that probability was some 0.3 it can go directly to station S3 let us say that probability is 0.5 or with some probability 0.2 it comes to server uh, or server station S2. So, uh, this is uh, the branching that can happen uh, furthermore there can be this feedback which is that after it received service at S1 suppose it went to suppose it took this branch and went to sir, uh, uh, station S3 uh, it may need one more service at server S1 and it is coming back there. So, that is called feedback. So, uh, what are the uh, applications under which this is possible? Uh, we had discussed this in last lecture also uh, for example, uh, threads may visit uh, CPU or IO multiple uh, times threads or processes. Um, certainly a process will not visit the CPU only once and the uh, IO only once it may have multiple bursts of CPU and IO this is how interactive processes are um, and it may need to suppose this is CPU and uh, this is uh, um, IO let us say this server is not there this is just S, uh, CPU and IO this is a typical uh, visiting routine that any process does some CPU some IO some CPU some IO. Um, then a typical web application again let us say uh, now we can actually have a third uh, server here. Let us say this is uh, not a CPU or IO, but some web server then some database server this could be some authentication server. So, it could be that some requests need authentication. So, they go here and then go to the database it could be that some uh, requests do not need authentication. So, they can go directly to the database and then of course, after visiting database most requests will actually need to come back to the web server to do some processing. So, this is very common and we do need generalized queuing networks. So, uh, again what are the parameters? Uh, the number is one the number of queuing stations, the external arrival rate this is now called the external arrival rate why is it external that is as opposed to internal. So, this is also an arrival rate, but there is nothing coming here from outside. So, this will be uh, in fact, we, we have a name for it uh, which is we call it effective arrival rates and we can call it by this uh, notation small lambda 2 and there will be some arrival here also uh, this will be lambda 3 and these are not external arrivals this is external arrival and there is only one external arrival rate uh, that we consider uh, which is the overall arrival rate into the entire queuing network. Uh, of course, we have our usual tau i's average service time per visit now we have to use this phrase per visit because we have multiple visits. So, this tau 1, tau 2, tau 3 will continue to denote uh, the amount of service that a request needs at that service station in one visit. Um, mu i as usual is just uh, 1 over tau i. Uh, C i is the number of servers at station i generally speaking in the next uh, in the in the remaining lecture um, in this course for queuing networks we are only going to deal with examples with single servers, but actually the general Jackson queuing network uh, uh, theorem does apply to multiple servers. Uh, this V i is a very very important new parameter for open queuing networks. Uh, this is the average number of visits to station i before departure. Okay. Uh, so, without this we cannot really uh, analyze uh, or understand the, the queuing network and its throughputs and utilizations and response times and so on. Uh, because once we are talking about some 
request visiting a server multiple times, we need to know how many times it did. So, for example, uh, we know that server 1 there is feedback here, uh, server 1 is obviously going to be visited more than once because every request uh, that comes from outside visits server 1 once and then there is some probability that it uh, goes uh, of course after one visit itself it can go. But uh, there is a very good probability that uh, they may uh, come back, there is a non-zero probability that they may come back and then the average will actually end up being greater than 1. Okay? The average number of visits that you do to uh, S1 will end up being greater than 1 and we need to know that number. So, this is an input to the queuing network uh, description um, and uh, actually this di is not a direct parameter, it is a parameter that is dependent on vi and tau i. Uh, this is called service demand, this is a very very new important term you have to learn service demand. Um, what is service demand? So, if a uh, request is now visiting a server multiple times, um, we there has to be a, a, a parameter or a number which tells us what is the total work that a particular service station has to do to fulfill any request. Okay. So, for example, if tau 1 was 5 milliseconds, okay, but a request on an average on an average does uh, 5 visits to server 1, uh, the total amount of work that the server 1 has to do to fulfill one request on an average is 25 milliseconds. Right? So, uh, it is kind of intuitive that we need to know this number to be able to figure out what the utilization of this server is going to be, what the uh, maximum throughput of this server can be uh, and so on. Okay. So, this is an important uh, number. So, now uh, that we saw the parameters of open queuing networks, uh, as usual let us look at metrics. Okay. So, this is the entire table of metrics, uh, system throughput. We have seen this in the tandem queuing network, it has the same meaning, uh, there is an entry, uh, the only difference is now the requests will visit the various servers of the network multiple times, the queuing network multiple times, but they will be at one some point of time they will be done. So, the rate at which they are completed is the system throughput lambda sys. System response time again the definition is the same time from entry, right? that is where the request will start and then they will exit, suppose this was time t1 and this was time t2, then basically r sys is t2 minus t1. Okay. Uh, so, that is the total time required for requests to complete their multiple visits, get their service and leave the system. Uh, throughput of station i continues to be the same again. So, for example, throughput of server s1 is capital lambda 1. Here uh, we have throughput of server S2 as capital lambda 2, throughput of server S3 as capital lambda 3. This will be different from the system throughput. Okay, that is what is different between tandem queuing networks and uh, and um, open queuing networks. Uh, the system throughput will be uh, determined by request completion rate, and the the server throughput per node throughput. Uh, or station throughput will be determined by how many times a request visits that server. So, we will see all of this. Um, then we have the server utilization that has the same meaning server S1 will have some utilization rho rho 1, uh, this will be rho 3, rho 2. Um, then we have something called the effective arrival rate at station i. This is again because there are multiple visits even though there will be some external arrival rate lambda, the arrival rate right at the server, right at the station S1 and S2 and S3 will be different and that we denote by small lambda 1, this is small lambda 2 here and this is and this is small lambda 3. Okay. Um, and it is kind of intuitive that this arrival rate here is going to be nothing but overall arrival rate external arrival rate multiplied by the number of visits here. right? So, uh, we will see these examples, but a quick example is if let us say 10 requests per second are coming to the system, 
and for example, uh, each request visits server S1 twice, obviously uh, we are going to get 20 requests per second here, right? 20 requests per second. So, that is how it works. Um, RI, WI, NI, QI have the usual meanings, uh, response R1 for example will be the whole response time here, uh, W1 will be just the waiting time, then we have correspondingly the queue length and the uh, number of um, customers at uh, server S1, similarly for S2 and S3. So, let us start uh, calculating them. Uh, let us start with system throughput as usual, throughput is always the easiest one to uh, reason about. Okay. Uh, again let us first define bottleneck throughput and then of course, the server that is going to be the bottleneck is going to be the bottleneck server. Okay. So, uh, bottleneck throughput for queuing networks with branching and feedback uh, has to depend on the service demand. Okay. The bottleneck throughput is going to be determined by uh, the service demand not the service time. So, we first define the bottle ser bottleneck service demand which is uh, basically this number of visits multiplied by per visit service time. You take the maximum of that and that is D sub B is going to be your bottleneck service demand um, and that you know that the server which has to do the most work per request um, across all the visits, it has to do the most work per request that is going to be the bottleneck server, right? that is going to be the one that determines the overall output maximum output capacity of the queuing network. So, the bottleneck server SB is the server with the maximum service demand which is that DB. And then bottleneck throughput uh, is nothing but 1 over DB. right? So, if a server um, uh, needs to do some 50 milliseconds of total work for a, so let us say db is equal to 50 milliseconds, then we know that this system cannot produce more than 20 requests per second, right? We just, it just cannot happen. So, uh, that is what the uh, bottleneck throughput is. So, let us, uh, uh, yeah, further high load asymptote, what happens as lambda starts going to infinity, okay? Uh, of course, the system throughput is going to converge to the bottleneck throughput. Uh, the system cannot do more than its slowest server can. Okay. The slowest server, the slowest station is going to be determining what the system as a whole can do. So, uh, uh, system throughput converges to uh, bottleneck uh, throughput. Uh, but in general, uh, what we have is uh, the uh, system throughput is going to be equal to minimum of uh, the external ar arrival rate and the uh, bottleneck throughput. Right. So, this is similar to how we had uh, lambda was minimum of small lambda and c mu right? recall for single node. This is what we had. Now, the c mu here is c mu was basically the maximum that a single node with c servers could do. Here that maximum is determined by this, this bottleneck service demand and, uh, and what the reciprocal of that bottleneck service demand is. Okay. Let us take an example because nothing like an example to reinforce this point. So, uh, suppose this server has uh, 5 milliseconds tau, this is uh, S2 is 10 milliseconds tau and S3 is 4 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, now, we might be tempted to, so clearly mu1 is 200 requests per second. mu 2 is 100 request per second, mu 3 is 250 request per second. Okay. Uh, but let us find out, so here in terms of it, it looks like the uh, mu 2 is the slowest service rate, right? the mu 2 is the slowest service rate. But remember that uh, this may not be the bottleneck because finally, it because server 2 may not get as many visits if server 1 gets a lot of visits, then even if it is faster than server 2, it may end up being the bottleneck. Even server 3, if it has, uh, it seems to be the fastest, but if it has many, many more visits uh, done by the request, then it will slow down anyway. That is intuitive, right? So, it really depends on the visits. So, let us take the, take the examples of what the visits are. So, here we are taking V1 is equal to 5, V2 is equal to 2, V3 equal to 3. 
Now we uh, we will write the service demands. Uh, D1 is 5 by 5 multiplied by 5, 25 milliseconds. D2 is 2 multiplied by 10, 20 milliseconds. D3 is 3 multiplied by 4, 12 milliseconds. So now it is clear that even though uh, server 1 seemed like uh, you know it has less work per visit than server 2, overall work required uh, to be done by server 1 to fulfill a request is more, 25 is the most. 20 is next, 12 is the least. So actually bottleneck server is going to be S1 and bottleneck throughput is going to be 1000 by 20 which is 40 requests per second. This is what this system can do, maximum this can do is 40 requests per second. Okay. Uh, so now just as an example if external arrival rate is 30 requests per second, this is less than 40. So then system throughput will also be 30 requests per second. If uh, uh, arrival rate is 50 requests per second system throughput will have to be converged to 40 requests per second. Okay. Now let us look at uh, utilizations right throughput is clear let us look at utilizations. So each request remember that it results in average of uh, VI visits to some to the node I. Um, so effect what effective arrival rate at node i is an important quantity as it is similar to service demand. There are two ways one can uh, account for the additional work that a node has to do because now the uh, request sir, visits a node multiple times. Either you inflate the arrival rate and you say that uh, I have uh, my effective arrival rate is lambda i which is equal to lambda multiplied by vi and then at each uh, visit I do tau i amount of work. Or you just think of it as a as an external arrival lambda and then you say that each external arrival, each new arrival needs a service demand amount of work. So in case of service demand we inflate the, the, the work required by the server. Uh, in case we are talking about effective arrival rates we are inflating the rate at which requests come to a server. Okay? It both achieve kind of the same purpose. So um, anyway, so uh, uh, effective arrival rates are denoted by lambda i which is lambda multiplied by vi, those are this here. So the arrival rate here is going to be lambda v1, uh, the arrival rate here is lambda v3 and the arrival rate here is lambda v2. Okay. Uh, so for a stable queuing network which is uh, where the external arrival rate is, is less than the bottleneck throughput only then the system can be uh, stable. Uh, the server utilizations are actually trivial we can actually use the normal arrival rate formula uh, server utilization formula which is lambda i by tau i um, and then substitute lambda i with lambda v i multiplied by tau i and uh, if you do this then actually you can see that actually we are getting this v i tau i in this formula and we can rewrite it as d i also. So, as I said there are two ways to look at it here it is the arrival rate that is inflated and then multiplied by the service time or the arrival rate is the is the external arrival rate and the service required at the station is inflated to the service demand. Okay. So this is how utilizations are calculated um, and for the uh, open queuing network with branching and feedback uh, we will actually not do this calculation for. Uh, high load asymptote, uh, we will do this uh, all the calculations only for stable queuing network. Uh, Let us look at an example as usual, uh, 5, 10, 4 is the uh, per visit service time, but uh, visits are 5, 2, 3, so actually this inflates to 25. Uh, this inflates to D2 is 20 and S3 service uh, inflates to 12. Okay, so that is really what the total is required by each request. Uh, now um, uh, let us look at the bottleneck server again this we had done earlier this is the same example. So uh, S1 is going to be the bottleneck server, bottleneck throughput is 40 requests per second we are carrying on the same example for lambda equal to 30 requests per second which is less than 40 so the network is stable. Uh, rho 1 is uh, we can use this formula 30 multiplied by 25 
uh, divided by 1000 just to make it uh, because 25 is milliseconds and this is request per second. So, we get 0.75 uh, rho 2 is 30 I am taking this lambda and taking d 2 which is 20 divided by 1000 this is 0.6 again 30 multiplied by 12 by 1000 this is 0.36. So, these are the utilizations. Uh, now, we can look at uh, response times. So, here uh, there is a very very important result called Jackson's theorem that uh, is required actually we, we cannot reason about response time uh, without this result called Jackson's theorem and because of this theorem all of these kind of queuing networks are actually called Jackson queuing networks. So, what is it that makes a queuing network a Jackson queuing network? Okay? Uh, first is that branching is memoryless. What does that mean? What it means is that the branching is purely by probability. So, there is a p 1 here like there is a p 2 and then this third will have to be 1 minus p 1 minus p 2. Okay. What memoryless branching means is that every time a, a request exits this system uh, the first server station uh, it is as if it does not remember how many times it has already visited this. Okay. Every time it exits it does not remember it is completely memoryless and these probabilities p 1, p 2, 1 minus p 1 minus p 2 they do not change. It does not change uh, based on whether you this is your fourth visit to S 1 or your tenth visit to S 1 or your hundredth visit to S 1 you will exit with probability p 1 you will go to server S 3 with probability p 2 and you will go to server S 2 with probability uh, 1 minus p 1 minus p 2 this does not change. Uh, this is very important. Uh, the other assumption is service times are exponential okay. um, and external arrivals have to be Poisson with rate lambda. So, why these assumptions are needed? Uh, it is for all the mathematical proofs to work out as usual we are not going to be doing proofs in this class. I am just stating these, but these are important because sometimes this may not be realistic. Uh, because especially consider a example of a web server if this was a web server and this is a database server. Uh, depending on the code sometimes the code is very clear that you are visiting you are making 3 database calls or 2 database calls. So, it is a fixed number of calls. So, uh, once one call is done then uh, with probability 1 uh, so, so for after the first visit to server server station S1 with probability 1 you will go to server S3 then after uh, the, the, the second uh, visit to web server is done you will go with probability 1 to server S3 and after the third visit you will not go if exactly 2 database calls are being done by this code after the third visit P2 is actually 0 and even 1 minus P1 minus P2 is 0. So, uh, uh, this is not actually something that can be captured by a memoryless branching, uh, but nonetheless many realistic systems are random and memoryless branching may actually capture uh, reality. And service times exponential and external arrivals are Poisson with rate lambda these are assumptions you need to, to prove this result. And what is the result? Okay, it says that each node i behaves like an MMCI queuing system with effective arrival rate lambda i equal to lambda v i. So, here we have uh, like I said earlier we have an effective arrival rate lambda 2 here, here lambda 3 this is uh, and here also lambda 1. External arrival rate is just what comes into the overall system because of feedback and branching the actual arrival rate to each of these server stations will be different. Um, so, this basically for example, server S2 is going to be an M M1 uh, we have to assume that it is an MM1 system. Uh, we have to assume that the service time is exponential and if this is Poisson and service time is exponential this behaves like an MM1 queue. Uh, remember that we have to use the uh, word behaves like because this is not really an MM1 queue uh, these arrivals are not Poisson. Even then you can use the formulae and the results uh, corresponding to the MMC uh, queues for uh, uh, response times and, and so on. Okay. So, that is a very very useful result 
and that allows us to uh, easily calculate metrics of open queuing networks. The other kind of corollary of this theorem is that the queuing network average metrics especially response time are same as an equivalent tandem queuing network where the single visit service times are equal to service demands of the original queuing network. Okay. So, what this result says which is a follow, follow up of Jackson's uh, uh, theorem that this queuing network is actually equivalent in all ways to this tandem queuing network. So, there is an external arrival rate then one server with the service demand d1 is going to be equal to v1 tau1 which is the v1 is of this network then v2 tau2 where the v2 is of this network and tau2 tau1s and tau2s and here also this is equal to v2 tau3 uh, v3 tau3 where the v3 is also of this network. So, these two are equivalent and if these are equivalent then uh, the, the, the response times uh, can also be written as a sum of the response times through each uh, through this uh, uh, tandem queuing network which is going to be nothing but summation of i uh, summation over i of d i divided by 1 minus rho i. This is just the response time of uh, mm1 queuing system with arrival rate lambda and service time d i right. So, this is a very uh, useful uh, result. So, let us uh, look at uh, an example as earlier uh, this is again 5, 10, 4 visits are 5, 2, 3, d1 is 25, d2 is 20, d12 is uh, d3 is 12 these are the products 5 multiplied by 5, 2 multiplied by 10 and 3 multiplied by 4. Uh, again we will do all of this only for stable. So, this is less than 40 remember the bottleneck throughput here is 40. So, this is less than 40 requests per second. Um, the 40 comes from the maximum service demand here which and the rate is going to be. So, this is bottleneck throughput right that is where the 40 comes from. Uh, the utilizations we had calculated earlier itself 0 0.75, 0 0.6, 0 0.36. So, if arrivals are poison uh, we can treat it like a tandem queuing network like this where the external arrival rate is 30 and the service time is the same as the service demand here and it is just a single sequential run through this uh, queuing network and the response times will be given by this. Uh, d d1 divided by 1 minus rho, rho 1 d2 divided by 1 minus rho 2 d2 divided by 1 minus rho 3 and this is what you get. Uh, so, this actually concludes our uh, open queuing network uh, topic and the, in the next class we will be studying uh, some examples and ex exercises from uh, not only open queuing networks, but other things also other uh, topics that we have covered till now. Thank you.